Hey y'all, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you so much for asking. It's me, Kim, and I'm back. Ever since Love is Blind dropped, people have been asking me to talk about Carlton and Diamond, their relationship, how that all unfolded. They want me to say if he's wrong, if she's wrong, if she's biphobic, if he's misogynistic. Well, I could talk about the misogyny part, but I really don't have the range to talk about any of the other stuff. I am a straight black woman. So I decided to bring on uh, somebody who actually knows what they are talking about. His name is J.R. Yusuf. He's a black bisexual man. He's an activist. He's a speaker. Um, and we had a conversation about all of it, about the show, about stigmas, about my phobia. We really got into it. So, uh, here it is. Yeah. First of all, thank you so much for taking some time to talk to me. I wanted to talk to somebody who actually knows what they're talking about regarding love is blind, because mm -hmm. there is a conversation happening right now about Carlton and Diamond, and I hear mm -hmm. so many voices, and I feel like people mm -hmm. are just loud and wrong for no reason. Mm -hmm. And so obviously, mm -hmm. you cannot be the spokesperson for all bisexual black men. I don't know. Nope. I do not expect that at all. <laughs> but I do trust your voice, and I trust your knowledge, and I trust you to keep it real. Thank you. Oh, man, that means a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I will keep it real. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about the show. You were able mm -hmm. to watch a few episodes of the show. Yeah, I was, and specifically, like, the Diamond and Carlton part. So. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's what we're going to be digging into. Okay, so <laughs> at the beginning of the show, Carlton mm -hmm. tells us, the viewer, that he's just attracted to hearts, right? So he describes his sexuality mm -hmm. as being fluid. I have a big secret. At one point in my young adult life, I found myself attracted to just hearts, period. Like, it didn't have a gender. It wasn't about sex for me. I get it, right? I understand it. And that's actually not the first time I've ever heard somebody describe their sexuality that way. I guess my yeah. question was, if you are just attracted to hearts, then why mm -hmm. go on a dating show that only pairs men with women? And I just wondered, mm -hmm. is that... Am I wrong for questioning that? Um... I don't know that you're necessarily right or wrong for questioning that. I think it's like, yeah, it's like a question that might come up in anybody's mind. Um, but the world is set up in a way so that it is either you're gay or you're straight. Mm -hmm. So there are very few, if any, uh, you know, dating shows where, you know, bisexuality is the norm. There are a couple, um, but very, very few. And so what a lot of bisexual people face is, if they want to date women, they have to go into spaces where it's assumed that everybody here is straight. If they want to date men, they have to go into spaces where everybody here is assumed to be gay. That is, that is actually true. Our our world is still set up for hetero couples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if you saw the very beginning, but he did mention some reasons for wanting to date a woman that I just had some questions mm -hmm. about. I want a wife now because I feel like women bring a certain like nurturing uh, love and affection to the table that, like, I don't get from a guy. It varies, like you said in the beginning. You know, I can't speak for all bisexual black men or all bisexual people in general. Um, but especially when it comes to, like, the label fluid specifically, which falls underneath the bisexual umbrella. So you could just say that you're bisexual, but when you get into the specifics, it's like, oh, I'm actually fluid. So I go through periods where I'm, like, perhaps more attracted to a person of this kind of gender and other periods where I'm, like, more aligned with or attracted to people of this kind of gender. Right. Um, but I do want, because it sounds like some of, like, your alarm bells were going off, so I definitely want to, like, acknowledge those because when I listen to a lot of the things that Carlton said, um, for me, um, they were a bit problematic, and um, it had to do with, you know, gender expectations and also the fact that we live in a heteronormative society uh -huh. that privileges that privileges heterosexual people, that privileges people in a relationship with somebody of a different gender than their own. So um, it, it, it would be nice if we lived in this, this society that didn't prioritize heterosexuality and didn't praise and favor heterosexuality. And it was just like this place where no matter what the gender of the person you're dating, you get the same privileges, you get the same respect, you get the same acceptance and all of this stuff. But we don't live in that society just yet. We don't, we don't live in that world. So when you are a man and you're dating a woman, there are certain things that come with that automatically that it, it, it's just a privilege. Like yeah. it's, it, they're, they're, it's a, it, 
for, for many men, unfortunately, um, they feel as though they, they are more manly when they are with a woman. And this goes for bisexual men, but it also goes for heterosexual men as well. Um, a lot of men, yeah, a lot of men see, do still see women as uh, trophies or do see women and their access to women as further validating their manhood and further de- validating their masculinity and their sexual prowess and all of these things. That's, that's the world we live in. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm so thank you. Thank you for putting, for um, summarizing that for me because I've been trying to really mm-hmm. work through it. And I do think yeah. it is because it does seem like he was relying so much on those tra- gen- traditional mm-hmm. gender roles and those traditional expectations. Exactly. And mm-hmm. then we'll get into the actual like confrontations that they had. But then mm-hmm. he immediately like reverted into like misogyny that made me really mm-hmm. uncomfortable, mm-hmm. but we will move there. Yeah. How do you feel about Carlton choosing not to disclose his sexuality to Diamond before proposing? Personally, um, so like you said in the beginning of the episode, I cannot speak for all bisexual men. I am only speaking for myself right. and I have been told that I have like relatively radical views on this. Um, but I do not believe that bisexual people owe anybody disclosure of our sexuality. This includes um, partners or medical providers or therapists, etc. I do not believe we owe it to anybody else. I believe if we choose to disclose and then we choose to disclose. And um, when we talk about disclosing, right, it's not just as simple as, you know, saying, oh, hey, I'm bisexual, and it's just that. Um, Oftentimes when you tell people that you're bisexual, it comes with so much that does not come with being heterosexual, does not come with being gay. Um, For example, a lot of times when people tell their partner, hey, I'm bisexual, hey, I'm attracted to more than one gender, for a lot of people, they hear that and they say, oh, this means you're really gay. Oh, this means you want to cheat on me. Oh, this means you have cheated on me. Oh, this means that you need to be with another gender in order to be satisfied. Oh, this means X, Y, Z, this means X, Y, Z. And it's like, no, I'm just letting you know that I am attracted to more than one gender. And that's really it. It doesn't have to come with all of this other stuff and all of this other baggage. But oftentimes when you do disclose, it does come with that stuff. And um, a lot of times when you talk to people about, you know, bisexuality, they're not equipped to be supportive. Yeah. They're not equipped to hear you out and just kind of understand you and not look at you as this like weird freak. It's actually a huge site of contention with uh, many of my bi friends. And I, <laughs> um, a lot of them say like, you know, you want to disclose not just to let them know, but also to see who you're dealing with, to yeah. see if this person is biphobic, is homophobic, is X, Y, Z. And that is a really great point. I actually mm-hmm. agree with you. And I actually do think mm-hmm. that at this point in time, that is, you know, a quote unquote radical position to take just because we've mm-hmm. all just been socialized into like heterosexism and like an assumption mm-hmm. that like straight is the default. <laughs> we should work on dismantling the assumptions that keep mm-hmm. bisexual people from being able to be who they fully are. And one of mm-hmm. those is that everybody is straight until proven not straight. I totally agree. Yeah, Yeah, um, it's just like, you know, this sort of like curiosity um, that people have and, oh, I want to know, tell me, tell me. And it's like, you know, I think that if we were to focus that energy, like you said, on to larger society and why it doesn't make it safe for bisexual people to just exist openly, then I think you would just inevitably have more people who are more open about their sexuality but I don't know I kind of like it's like it's kind of irrelevant it's it's irrelevant like I'm attracted to you and I want to be with you and um we're a monogamous couple so it's it's kind of it's irrelevant yeah but but, but then that that also mm -hmm. kind of goes into an assumption that a lot of people have about bisexual people that like that bisexual people are promiscuous Right. So like the Mm -hmm. idea that you are if you are just attracted to hearts, as Carlton describes himself, or if you're attracted to men and women or people of all genders, then that means Mm -hmm. that like we can't be in a monogamous relationship because you're going to walk down the street and see somebody that you think is attractive. And then Mm -hmm. you're going to like, but but why have we attached that kind of stigma to just somebody Mm -hmm. having a sexuality? Um, I did want to try to uh, step away from, you know, further demonizing 
this idea of, you know, uh, sexual liberation or being sexual or being quote unquote promiscuous, um, because I don't think in and of itself, there is anything wrong with that. Um, I have been in different periods of my life, been in a space where I'm very, very sexual. I've been in a space in my life where I've been not sexual. And um, I just, I think that it gets enough demonization um, but I do notice that with bisexual individuals that automatically gets attached to them. Mm-hmm. And it reminds me of like this idea that bisexuality is this deviant sexuality, especially in bisexual black men. Um, you know, like it's this idea that black men's sexuality is this deviant, uh, perverse, too much thing is like actually about racism. Um, when you talk about the early days of the film industry and you know blackface and all of that stuff um you know you it's pictured as black men as like these animalistic men who have no boundaries who want to sleep with white women and take the white woman from the white man and all of this stuff um and then you fast forward that through the years and these ideas that linger are that you know black men's sexuality is dangerous it's out of control it's animalistic Um, It's disgusting. And, um, you know, a lot of those adjectives can be seen when you talk about bisexuality in black men. Yeah. Yeah. It's so layered. And that's a conversation that I try to have in these spaces when I'm even speaking to black women is that like the fear of black women being sexual or being able to embrace our bodies or talk about Mm -hmm. sex explicitly, that is tied to these these stereotypes and these historical Mm -hmm. myths that were perpetrated about us in order to bolster Mm -hmm. white supremacy. So you don't Mm want to play to white supremacy, right? Like Mm -hmm. be you (laughs) and be free and reject that stuff and don't let those scripts that we have been taught Mm -hmm. via white supremacy, don't let that dictate not only how you feel about yourself, but how you treat other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, other black folks. Like that's a big deal. I wanted to underscore that you made a really good point about not demonizing promiscuity my Mm -hmm. bad definitely came out (laughs) that way i did want to underscore that the point that i was trying to make is not about um fuck fucking who you want to fuck is bad but Mm -hmm. i do think that Mm -hmm. like um lying is bad and deception is bad and so people they say like if you desire monogamy then Mm -hmm. people have this assumption that if you're with a bisexual person or a very Mm -hmm. sexual person that Mm -hmm. they are not capable of engaging Mm -hmm. in a um in a legitimate monogamy in a in a a, a monogamy that has integrity and like that serves Mm -hmm. the needs of of both parties um all right so let's let's move on so um we get to episode three when there's that the big reveal and um (laughs) Diamond doesn't take it. She doesn't take it horribly. She doesn't take it the best. And then we get to four and she's still kind of confused and trying to figure things Mm -hmm. out. I have dated both genders. I'm looking at you right now. No, I'm listening. No, but I feel like your eyes are so blank. It's like a lot to take in. I know, I know. If Mm -hmm. Diamond had said, uh... If she had really flipped out the way that I think a lot of people might have flipped out and just been like, that's Mm -hmm. disgusting. I (laughs) don't date bisexual men. Uh Would she have been biphobic? Um, (laughs) Yeah. So to to, um, yes, yes, definitely. Um, To to not want to date somebody specifically because they are bisexual, just because they are bisexual. Yeah, that's like textbook definition. Like this is biphobic. And, you know, like lots of people are biphobic and, you know, this is just part of the grooming of the society. Yeah. Yeah. So this Mm -hmm. is the thing. So this is what's been so fascinating to me. And it's like, you know, I love black women. I really, really do. But I also think Mm -hmm. sometimes we be kind of veering outside of our lane sometimes because um, Mm -hmm. I'm a straight person. I'm a straight black woman. It is not Mm -hmm. my position to tell somebody what biphobia is. So (laughs) I don't know. I understand that, like. I felt for Diamond because I think that like yeah. she was confused and like she didn't know and mm-hmm. she's on camera mm-hmm. and like all of that. At the same time, um, I do think that she handled it pretty well. It could have gone much mm-hmm. worse. But mm-hmm. 
I am not going to let the way that I understand Diamond's position as a black woman who desires love, that still does not give me a right as a viewer to say, no, she's not biphobic and it's not biphobic. Mm -hmm. It's like, you guys, we got to stay in our lane. The same way that we tell other people to stay in their lane, they can't tell us what sexism is. They can't tell Mm -hmm. us what racism is. I do absolutely think that we have to check Um, are uninterrogated assumptions, not just about Mm -hmm. bisexual men, but also a lot of that Mm -hmm. stuff is rooted primarily in homophobia. And like, and we, you know, don't really want to have those conversations because it's awkward and uncomfortable and nobody really Mm -hmm. wants to cop to the ways that they have all of these biases. And like, honestly, bigotries. And it's just like, For me, at this point, I'm just like, just own it. You know what I'm saying? Like, just own it. Like, I can't force you to date a bisexual man. I can't force anybody to date a bisexual man. But the very Mm -hmm. least you can do is just own it. You know what I thought was fascinating? Um, People are obsessed with this idea. When I've tried to have conversations about biphobia on this this channel, in this space, and in other spaces, people are obsessed with, with this idea that they're just not attracted to bisexual men. Like you can (laughs) walk down a street and see a man and tell whether or not he's attracted to men. You can tell whether or not he's attracted to all genders. You can see him across the bar and say, no, 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 that's a bisexual man. So I'm not attracted (laughs) to him. And I think that something that's interesting that this series breaks down is maybe you can't actually, you probably can't, right? Because we saw Diamond be quite mm-hmm. surprised when um, Carlton revealed to her, you know, that he yeah. was attracted. So it's like, can we talk a little bit more about this assumption that like all bisexual folks look a certain way or do a certain thing? Um, <laughs> so I have done a lot of reading on this. And um, I remember years ago, I came across this study that estimated somewhere around perhaps 80% of the population falls into this category where they have either had fantasies or um, feelings or crushes or um, sexual uh, attraction or dreams or whatever toward people of more than one gender. Now, like by science's definition, that would sort of try to categorize them as bisexual. Um, for me, I do not necessarily um, do that. I, I don't think it's necessarily always helpful to just automatically label someone as like, oh, well, you've had, you know, this sort of like um, fantasy about more than one gender, automatically bisexual. Um, that is what science might say. And, you know, I, I, I get that for like representation purposes, you know, just to like allow people to realize that this is far more common than we're talking about. Um, but, you know, a part of bisexuality or part of identifying in general is like, you know, the empowering nature and like you feeling like, yes, like this is a significant part of me that I want to acknowledge and embrace. There are so many bisexual people in the world um, and we look, we look so radically different from one another. Our experiences are so varied and some of us are specifically for men. Some of us are assumed to be gay. Some of us are assumed to be straight. And depending on whether you're assumed to be gay or straight, your experiences are just going to be radically different. (laughs) It makes perfect sense to me. And I also really understand the point that you're making about active identification. Mm -hmm. I think that like in other marginalized communities, like we kind of say the same thing, like don't force somebody to be black if they don't want to be black, right? Like that, yeah. those kinds of conversations come up on, and there is um, a political empowerment to opt, opting mm-hmm. into an identity and choosing to be part of yeah. a community. I think that that's a really yeah. great point. I don't know if you had a chance to do any Googling about this like mm-hmm. deeper, but the other thing that came up about Carlton was he was on the Real Housewives of Atlanta and he used to be Cynthia's assistant. Who I work are for the mail agency. Who are you? you? Because I've never met you, bitch. Bitch, please. Bitch. Oh, excuse me. You don't see you yourself. So I'm not holding up a mirror. You need to step off. You need to step off. Excuse me, security. security. I work here, dear. You'll be ushered out before me. And so. Oh, wow. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, I think I saw a picture or like, I thought it was a meme. I yeah. saw a picture floating around on Twitter. I just thought like they like photoshopped it or I don't know. Like no. I saw I saw 
I nope. think I saw what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so a lot of people, and this goes back to like bisexual people are tricking us thing. Cause a lot of people said, well, mm-hmm. when he was on real housewives, he was gay and he was, and he also mm-hmm. used to be like really active on Twitter, like back in the day day. Oh, and, wow. so, mm-hmm. and so look, there is this thing that like, bisexual men and I do think that it's there's a specific thing about men is that like they're tricking us right like Mm -hmm. they really are gay and because of all of the societal pressures that you talked about Mm -hmm. earlier right um the way that heterosexuality and hetero couples are privileged Mm -hmm. that they want to opt into um Mm -hmm. a relationship with the woman even if that's not their true feeling yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and that's yeah mm -hmm. How how do we like get away from that how do we navigate that? Yeah. I mean, I think it's definitely an important conversation to have. And um, yeah, I I don't skirt away from that conversation and I don't skirt away from, you know, this idea of like, you know, bisexual men are tricking you and things like that. Um, I know that for a lot of men, the way you present yourself, your gender uh, expression and presentation plays a huge role into uh, desirability. And so when you talk about, women and desirability, you know, they, they are not, they don't exist outside of patriarchy. They don't exist outside of these ideas that say, okay, you know, men should be like this. Men should be masculine. Men should be tall. Men should be muscular. And if they are not, uh, take some down a peg up, uh, make some less desirable. And so, you know, a lot of bisexual people are aware of that. And I notice myself, I do that too. When I'm attracted to a man or a woman or a non-binary person, I notice that like my voice drops a couple octaves, even mm-hmm. though I have a relatively high voice. And like it, to a certain degree, it's not even conscious. Yeah. Um, to a certain degree, if I'm attracted to somebody, I, I, I like there are just a bunch of different things that just start happening. <laughs> And yeah, this is like society and it kind of tells us, oh yeah, if you want to be attractive to uh, other people as a man, you need to be masculine. You need to be like this. You need to be like this. You need to dress like this. And that's very real. Uh, That is very real. I mean, there are a lot of bisexual men who come out the way they do. They dress how they want to dress. They wear whatever they want to wear and they live their lives. But, you know, there are also a lot of bisexual men who do augment themselves. Like, oh, okay, so if I'm dating a woman, you know, the expectation is that I have to dress like this or move like this. And I think about this a lot, actually, um, because I'm like, I don't know if I could date a woman who was heterosexual anymore, just kind of because of where I'm at. And um, I mean, a, a lot of that does come with, you know, these ideas that I've put in my head about, oh, what a heterosexual woman is like. But um, even Ooh. sort of outside, right, exactly. No, <laughs> so this is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm into it. <laughs> look okay. At, look at me being a hypocrite. No, um, but yeah, like even outside of, even outside of like how we communicate and if we mesh, right? But what about your friends? What about if I'm around your family? Are they, Is your family going to pull you to the side and be like, you know, your boyfriend is gay, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, that's the that's the stuff that I think about yeah. um, when I think about when I think about like, wow, well, could I actually like date a heterosexual woman? Huh, I don't know. I would be very open to dating a, a woman who identified as bi or queer or something like that, um, because it, it would be very likely that people in her immediate circle would be sort of queer or at least very LGBT friendly and understand that it's okay to defy gender norms and societal norms and I'm not this weird uh, interloper that's trying to trick you. Oh, I, oh, this is so good mm-hmm. and so true. Yeah. It's so <laughs> true because um, even if you think about, I mean, I have to kind of check myself as a person who dates men about the expectations mm-hmm. that I have of my Mm -hmm. male partners or even like, you know, you get on the apps or you go out on dates and you're like, oh, I don't know, what did he do? And then you have to think of, why did that bother you? Or like, you know, you talked about height and stuff and like, I'm very, Mm -hmm. very short, so like, it don't matter to me. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, I definitely (laughs) have... I've had so many conversations with women about like, why do you, why do you, why does your partner have to be 5'10"? Like, why does he have to be like, mm-hmm. well, you're 5'2", right? So like, because we, <laughs> we associate these things with 
with masculinity, we desire mm-hmm. as hetero women, even if we're feminist, even if we say we're progressive, we want to be protected. We want to be able to be scooped up. We want our man to act like this and have a deep voice and walk mm-hmm. like this. And yeah. and if he, yeah. oh, he's weird because he doesn't like sports. And it's all of that stuff, right? And so yeah. even in communities of straight women, we we talk about this stuff and we reaffirm it in each other and like not yeah. even thinking about how, you know, like if we're really serious about this dismantling case, patriarchy shit like yeah. we also have to be yeah. serious about dismantling these really narrow constructs of masculinity like these really narrow constructions of masculinity that we expect to show up in our intimate relationships and like yeah. that is hard like it is hard and it's uncomfortable yeah. it is it is really hard and it's it's really hard to acknowledge like the parts that you play both unknowingly and knowingly into feeding into the, the patriarchy um something that i'm really passionate about is allowing other bisexual men and uh, gay men to know like, yes, we are not heterosexual, but we still benefit from male privilege and we still uphold, you know, misogyny and we still uh, talk about women in a certain way or think about women in a certain way and that needs to really change. Yeah, and I think that like that does, for me, it really showed up in the show and like how when diamond was not giving carlton the exact kind of reaction that he wanted first of all i felt like mm-hmm. he was going flip-flopping back and forth he was saying stuff that didn't make sense but also he went straight <laughs> to carlton well, he won't make sense we won't uh-huh. make sense because how is it carlton that uh no other woman had had a problem with it but then all mm-hmm. of a sudden um everybody has a problem with it and that's why you didn't want right. to come out like you need to get your story right. straight but i okay yeah. i'm trying to be empathetic i understand it's hard but um <laughs> but he went straight to calling diamond a bitch Fuck her in. <laughs> this is why i don't deal with bitches like you I'm a bitch now. And I'm like, what is yeah. that? Like, whoa, yep. whoa, whoa. That was completely outrageous um, and completely reprehensible. And, and I have had to get into the DMs of quite a few people that I follow on Twitter who are bisexual men and tell them like, hey, bro, like we can't, we, just because we're queer, that does not mean that we are exempt from misogyny. Like we can't do that. We cannot do that. You cannot use that word on a woman. Like, you know what I mean? You can't talk to women that way, even if they make you upset, even if they hurt your feelings, even if they call you the word, like, even if they call you a slur, like, that's not, that's not us. Like, that's not, I don't want to take part in that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, um, because it's wrong, because I believe it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, And when it comes to, like, um, Diamond and Carlton, I thought that even the way he uh, reacted right after he disclosed with him like um, throwing his hat and like kind of like doing it in a very sort of explosive way. Fuck! <laughs> For me, that was kind of like um, a red flag or like I was, I was kind of like worried when that first happened. I was like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like what's going on over here? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, not, not, not to insinuate that, oh, well, she should have known. But I'm just, I'm just saying like when that, when that happened right after he um, disclosed, um, I could tell it was it was really really tough for him. There were there were probably so many different thoughts going on in his mind, conflicting thoughts like, well, I don't really think that this is super important. I don't think that I have to. Um, but also the guilt that you know society embeds into many black bisexual men, like, oh no, you need to come out, you need to disclose, you need to tell, especially a woman, um, about you and see how she deals with it. But he was really, really volatile and with his, his, his uh, reactions after that, and it was really, really scary to watch. I didn't know what was going to happen, and I was like, yo, I hope they got bodyguards yeah. off to the side, if they got to wring his neck real quick, or something. like, you know what I mean? Right. Like. You don't, you don't, you don't act like that. You don't act like that with somebody that you're dating or, or you're intimate with or whatever. Like, so I definitely think that there are some issues with the way that Diamond reacted and saying like, I, Mm -hmm. I thought that you were really into me. And I'm like, girl, that's not, Mm -hmm. that's not the way that bisexuality works. Um, But I also was very concerned for her because like you said, some of Carlton's reactions were violent to me. And it's like, if I was on a date with somebody or if I was out Mm -hmm. with somebody and first of all, if you throw anything, we're, uh uh-uh, it's not, it ain't gonna go. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. We're (laughs) out. Like, we're done. We're not yelling. Mm -hmm. We're not name Mm -hmm. calling. We're not throwing things. It's not, it's not cool. So there were things that made me think like, oh, maybe this show needs to have more rigorous, like, 
mental health. Like, Mm -hmm. um, inspections are like surveys Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. Carlton, even outside of the the pressure of, you know, um, having this quote unquote secret or or being worried about how this woman that he was in love with, in love Mm -hmm. with, we're going to put love in quotation marks, um, (laughs) how she was going to react the way that he was responding and behaving. And I don't know, I get a little concerned that he couldn't even really talk about his sexuality without like breaking down and crying. Like, I, mm-hmm. and I was like, yeah. is it, is it wrong to judge that? Cause it just feels like, even if I'm um, okay dating a bisexual man, should you mm-hmm. be able to, to discuss your sexuality? Like, could, should we be able to have a conversation about it without it becoming explosive or without you breaking down into tears? Mm. Oh man. Um let's go let's go there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so if if he is disclosing and stuff, yeah, the the expectation is that, you know, we should be ha- able to have like a a conversation. And um I think that you brought up a really great point that Diamond came into the conversation even though maybe she didn't have the best words or the best tools. She came into the conversation like at least willing to hear what he had to say and hear him out and try to be supportive, even if she couldn't be fully, fully supportive. She had that very um, sort of openness and uh, intention to to do that and to be there and to have that conversation, whereas Carlton um, did not. And I think that very early on, after he disclosed, he got signals that, oh, this person is not taking it well. This person is likely like the other people in my past who have rejected me for this thing, who have, have told me like, Oh, like in one way or another that, you know, you're never going to be able to be happy with anyone of any gender because you are bisexual. And these are very, very real thoughts that a lot of bisexual people face and feel. And it is, you know, reaffirmed in society when we go out and do disclose and it is a a big site of contention. Um, And when you get into uh, mental health stuff, when you get into things like poverty and sexual violence and all of that stuff, bisexual people fare way worse than our heterosexual and our homosexual counterparts. Um, a lot of people don't know that about like interpersonal violence or about mental health uh, crises and poverty and blah, blah, blah. The list goes on. Bisexual people fare way worse than gay people and straight people. And a lot of that is because of society. A lot of that is not feeling like we are normal and constantly seeing those, those images and that, that storyline go on and on and on in a wide variety of media. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've seen people, even a couple of queer people I know critique Carlton's behavior during the show Mm -hmm. and then in the reunion and saying that he was being, manipulative to diamond and like in his um with the tears and then the like uh will you be my friend again yeah 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 Yeah. Yeah. what are your reactions to that uh i remember when he stood up and he was about to get on one knee i was like what are you doing what are you doing (laughs) um i was like nah please (laughs) um it did it did feel manipulative because uh, we know what the symbol of a ring is. We know what the symbol of getting on your knee with a ring is. Um, And so even though you're saying verbally, oh, no, this is just a friendship ring. Oh, no, this is just to um, amend what happened and to say I'm sorry and like to start a new friendship. We know what a ring on a person's left left hand ring finger means. And that holds like a weight. And so it did feel manipulative. It did feel like he was trying to put his foot back in the door. Like, oh, eventually we can maybe get married. Um, And um, I really resented that. I I, I thought that um, him apologizing both off screen, which he alluded to, and also, again, on national TV, I think that I really appreciated that. I I did. but yeah, I don't know why he did that. And um, it goes back to what I always say. Um, <laughs> it's like, I want to be with the right person. I want to be with a person who's compatible with me. And if they happen to be a man, cool. If they happen to be a woman, cool. 
If they happen to be non-binary, cool. I want to be the, with the right person for me. So I don't want to put more weight or more importance on my relationships with women than I do with any other gender. Mm, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> we really do not see a lot of representation in media of black bisexual men. And I think for a lot of people, this is going to be their first or primary introduction to black oh, bisexual God. men. And I just wanted to know how you feel about the fact that like when in the, the very rare instance that a black bisexual man gets a, an opportunity to have a huge audience and a huge platform, that this is the mm -hmm. kind of representation that we see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Um Carlton is a human being, and he is a person with a complex history and a complex life and dreams and ambitions and goals. And I respect his humanity, and I respect him as a person. And it's unfortunate that marginalized people, when we eventually do get the spotlight, so much is attached to us and our story, and we're supposed to be this beacon of light. Um, or we're supposed to represent it in this like sort of polished and perfect way. Um, I think that this points to the fact that there needs to be more representation of black bisexual men. There needs to be black bisexual writers writing these characters. Um, or if it is going to be like a reality TV show, it would be great for it not to only be one black bisexual man, but two. And you see the ways that they're similar. You see the ways that they're different. And yeah, just it just points back to we need more voices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that is all I have. I think that this is so, this conversation was so interesting to me because it's so it's so good to get reminders that like subsections of marginalized group, black women, black queer folks, black bisexual folks, like we all have a mm -hmm. lot of the same like issues and grievances, and we're all trying to kind mm -hmm. of figure out. We're trying to navigate these structures in our own very sp in specific ways. And I just, mm -hmm. you just really reminded me of that. Like, there are things outside of my own experience that I just need to be cognizant of. So thank you so much. You brought up some really great points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, y'all. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment here. Hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. Get some merch. This is Read More Bell Hooks merch. Still selling it. I need more merch design. So if you have an idea for a merch design, send me an email. I will buy it from you happily. That's what we'll do. Sign up for the email newsletter. Sign up for Patreon. Become a YouTube member. Join the member below. That's all I got. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>